So now we just want to start reflecting a bit more on this question of health. And because we know that healthy means something different to everyone and that everyone brings their own personal history and experiences when we talk about health. We all have a different experience. However, we're aiming to live in a good food nation where everyone can afford food that keeps them healthy and well. And if we want to do that, as Chelsea was saying, we need to know a bit more about what the shared hopes are and aims are. So what does this actually look like in practice? And um, so I'm going to ask you to again go back to Menti or use the chat if you prefer. And to answer this question, what does healthy mean in this context, in this context of a good food nation? What is it that we want everyone to be able to afford? And you can share words, phrases, ideas. Doesn't just have to be types of food, but maybe for you, health is uh, is related to something else as well. And so we just have it in the chat as well. You have the website and the code if you need that. Okay, so vitamin rich, choice, and a balanced nutritious diet, health and feeling food minimally processed foods, foods with promote health, body and brain function, variety, health, uh, nourishing, tasty, feeling affordable, sustainable, uh, nourishing and comforting, um, low on salt, sufficient to nourish the body. Health means total social, physical and mental well-being, fresh fruit and vegetables, for fresh food to be cheaper than frozen food, adequate energy, nourishing and comforting, fresh nourishing, less processed reliance, a balance of different foods, food that keeps my body well, feeling health for people and health for the environment, all the fruits and veg people want, easy access to fruit and bread and veg, never having to skip fresh fruit, grown locally, People can access and afford nutritious, healthy food and have the information and understanding of diet to make informed decisions, good for the environment. Okay, so there's a lot of information here, but we can see that health is about so much more than, than the actual food. Like it is, uh, people are bringing in the environment, the, for the health for people and animals. So it's a really, really big concept. Um, but we can see some patterns appearing and we can see this shared shared understanding of what healthy could look like. And so I'm gonna pass over to, to Chelsea to talk a bit more about this healthy versus healthy enough idea. Thanks very much, Diana. And thanks again for contributing there. This point about you know, what our shared healthy aspirations are, I think is really critical um, when we're trying to imagine the world that we want to live in. What is it that we're trying to, to do? Where are we trying to go with all of this? So um, we've got a few more minutes um, now to just explore a little bit more about how we were talking about this healthy bit, the bit um, of our balance when we were talking about healthy enough and what it is that we mean by that. So I want to take us back to the rights-based framing. So a right to adequate food is, is not just a minimum package of calories, proteins, and other specific nutrients. And it is about having the ability to afford enough good quality of food to satisfy our dietary needs that is safe, free from adverse substances being safe, and is acceptable within our culture, is socially acceptable, is the way that, that we would want to participate. So we did some work together. We wanted to understand what is important to a family of this size? What would their priorities be about the food that they want for their family? So after we got to know this family so well as a group, what are their shared aspirations? We did a lot of work to first of all establish what a typical week might look like, the kinds of foods they would eat in a normal week. And, and that was just, you know, we weren't putting any particular pressure on ourselves. We were just thinking, what are the foods that this family eats? What do the Robinsons eat? What do the McDougals eat? And then we got some advice on that, um, on the typical plans from some of our public health um, friends on our steering group, um, who, and we worked. Uh, we discussed the eat well guides with the groups to think, how can we get a little bit closer? Like if we were thinking about both our 
and wider healthy aspirations and the ones that we have as a nation um, around where our dietary goals are and those kinds of things. And um, what, you know, how could we move, make some healthy swaps or add-ins to the, to the meal plan that we've already established? that would help us move slightly further in this direction. So these criteria help the groups to reflect not just on what was essential for survival, but also what they needed to enjoy food and participate in, in society today. And I just want to be quite clear about what the meal plans and the shopping lists are and what they're not. So they do not include only healthy foods and they do not include only cheap foods. Um, and they are not instructions about how to save money or change your diet. They're not about, they're not tools for individuals to use and um, to, to be the cheapest or the healthiest. What they are is the healthiest balance of foods that people would experience shopping for, preparing and eating in families today agree is a good fit for people's lives and would be enjoyed by most people living in Scotland. So they're, they're not exactly the eat well guide. They are in many ways healthier than what the Scottish population is eating today. But the main point here is that they're the healthiest version that we were able to get to and agree as a group. And that is really significant and important. So after the break, we'll be back in our breakout rooms to explore the dinners that each of the families eats across a normal week. The aim here is to think about the balance of time and effort and um, that they would need in order to sort of cook and prepare these foods. Um, and just kind of think about that in terms of our shared aspirations about health and healthy eating, but also recognizing the, the sort of enjoyable bits of, of life as well as the good fit for people's lives. So um, just as an example, in a small family, the community advisors agreed that if a mom is going to go to the effort of making a spaghetti bolognese on a Wednesday, she might repurpose the other half of that for a chili con carne the next day. So yes, we're making a scratch cooking meal one day, and um, we're maybe not doing that every single day, um, but there's no, but we might be repurposing that. So that, that was, again, just to reiterate the level of detail that we were thinking about here. So that chili con carne doesn't appear some random other time in the week. It appears right next to it in the week. So as you go back into your rooms to explore after the break, um, go back into your rooms to explore more about the dinner preparations. I just want you to um, sort of keep that in mind. And I hope you had interesting conversations. We certainly did in our breakout room. And if you can maybe share with us a key point um, you will remember or a question I'm taking back to, to your work. So from, I guess, from the last uh, two breakout rooms and the discussions that you'll be having, uh, looking at the menu, the balance, the vision, what is the key point you will remember from, from the discussions and, or, a question that you're taking back to you, to your work. Our group thought the family could likely eat out more, would likely eat out more. How healthy is healthy enough? The diet of a good food nation will not necessarily look like the eating well plate. Uh, do we need to have more scratch items in our food bank? Batch cooking, how accessible is this? Um, what is considered healthy is very complex. Cooking from scratch more, work and family commitments shape food choices. Balancing aspiration uh, with achievable how important food is to people and social about family bonds and therefore mental health. How can we provide the foods that people want to cook at home in our community group? That the food available in pantries largest is largely supporting assisted meals rather than cooking from scratch. So what people eat is decided by lots of different factors and not just income and time. What does a healthy food parcel really look like? 25% of calories come from out of home. 
Is this reflected? Will encourage batch cooking. So there are like the, the, yeah, lots of really interesting questions and uh, things to remember. So for some people seem to like a good representation. The factors involved in fee feeding a family are very complex. And, and, and it's interesting, you know, that when we looked at that, at that uh, pie, um, um, you know, there are like lots of things to consider, like, you know, the business of, of the family, um, you know, the fact that at, at some point in the month, you will want to have a takeaway and considering all those things when deciding what, what to prepare throughout the week is, is interesting. <laughs> 